and good evening. I'm Melissa Idris. Welcome to Consider This. This is the show where we want you to consider and then reconsider what you know of the news of the day. I'm delighted to introduce my guest today. Joining us on set is His Excellency Dato Hermono, who is the Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia to Malaysia. Welcome to the show, Ambassador. It's good of you to join me. Now, before we begin our conversation, I, I really want to um, start our, mm. our discussion today delving deeper into the um, pressing concerns surrounding the abuse and exploitation mm. of Indonesian migrant workers um, migrant workers and domestic workers here in yeah. Malaysia. I understand there are strategies uh, being implemented to address the, yeah. this issue. But before we get into that, um, can we start with the prevalence of mm. such abuses and exploitation? I'm um, wondering because you know often public attention is drawn to these yeah. um, issues only when it escalates to the courts or there's a legal issue yeah, yeah. or when there's unfortunately a tragic matter a, a hospitalization or a death um, in your assessment ambassador how widespread do you believe these exploitations happen within um, the migrant worker community mm. of your fellow countrymen here in Malaysia yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Malaysia, for uh, having me. It's my pleasure. And uh, you know that uh, Indonesia uh, is the biggest uh, contributor of uh, migrant workers mm -hmm. uh, in Malaysia if we put uh, documented and uh, undocumented. The documented one, we have around uh, 59,000 Indonesians. That's documented. Mm -hmm. I mean, those who have... Who have uh, work permit in Malaysia, but those who are undocumented, I think the number is uh, very big. Bigger than 59,000? Uh, oh, sorry, 59,000 is for the domestic worker. The total is around uh, 100 something. Okay. But uh, uh, in total around, uh, I guess around 1.8 million Indonesian working uh, in Malaysia. Actually, the abuse or the uh, cases that we handled, most uh, are, are those who work as a domestic uh, okay. uh, sector. Mm. And uh, those who are working in uh, construction, plantation, or services, uh, we uh, receive report, but uh, very uh, insignificant, maybe only 10% out of the total report that we receive. So in this case, uh, that most cases, around 90% of the cases that we handled, are those who are working as domestic uh, sector in Malaysia. Mm. But the other sector, we don't have any serious uh, issues like maybe, yeah. Okay, so Indonesia has a, has a wide diaspora mm. of uh, migrant workers worldwide. Yes. How does the situation of Indonesian domestic workers here in Malaysia compare to the experiences of working in other host countries are there similar patterns of um, exploitation or do we see distinctive challenges um, specific to Malaysia? Uh, of course, uh, we, uh, we have uh, issues of domestic worker in other countries. We have in Malaysia, Singapore, uh, Hong Kong and the Middle East uh, mm -hmm. countries. But uh, the, the, those in Malaysia and in Middle East countries uh, are those who most cases uh, happen to our domestic uh, workers. And uh, considering that Malaysia uh, is the biggest uh, uh, Indonesian workers in Malaysia, of course, the, the number of cases also bigger compared to uh, other uh, countries. Mm. Uh, the different uh, things uh, in the enforcement. So, Co so compared to countries let's say like, country like, uh, like uh, Singapore, in Singapore okay. Hong Kong. So uh, we do have cases in Singapore. We do have cases in Hong Kong, but we do have uh, cases in Taiwan. But here, the typical cases in Malaysia are mostly uh, unpaid salary. Uh, and uh, I, maybe in the, in, in, in the Middle East country, we do have some cases uh, like unpaid. But here, I think in Malaysia, is the most uh, notorious uh, cases that uh, we handle is uh, unpaid uh, salary. Mm -hmm. There are abuse, but the number are not as many as uh, unpaid salary oh. and exploitation. 
exploitation mean they work uh, excessively access hours, uh, yeah. access hour more than uh, 12 hours a day so they run away because of the burden too high well another word for that is modern slavery isn't it you may say so <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> but uh, yeah. there's there, there is uh, elements okay. of uh, forced labor forced labor uh, okay. in this uh, case if you define Uh, forced labor. Uh, I think there's element of forced labor like uh, passport confiscation, I holding see. salary, mm -hmm. uh, lack of movement, and so on. I think there's element of um, uh, modern uh, slavery or forced labor. Like, forced uh, forced, forced labor. labor. And I think Malaysia also uh, recognized these issues. Uh, as you know that in early 2022, Malaysia issues a national action plan on uh, forced labor. It means Malaysia recognized, and this is a good step that you, uh, Malaysia recognized the presence of uh, forced labor. And uh, what we need to see is uh, the, how Malaysia uh, address this forced labor, because I think this is also important uh, to for Malaysia as a country, that the, the image of the, uh, Malaysia in in international uh, yeah. uh, that the forced labor still uh, happen in this modern world. Ambassador, if I may, um, I have observed mm -hmm. or noticed that you often speak out on this topic, uh -huh. that you you are the one to raise this issue often in the press. You make very um, um, compelling statements <laughs> which, which make the headlines. Uh -huh. What role do you think U.S. Ambassador plays in safeguarding your fellow countrymen uh, here? Yeah. First, of course, uh, my uh, most important priority uh, is the protection of Indonesian uh, nationals uh, in Malaysia, mm -hmm. and particularly those uh, who are working in, in Malaysia or migrant workers of uh, Indonesia. And uh, I raised this issue to the, to the public through media, uh, basically to raise awareness uh, that these uh, cases happen in Malaysia. And uh, I, I'm happy to uh, note that uh, I receive a lot of uh, support from Malaysia. I think this is also a problem of Malaysia. So <laughs> Malaysia, our uh, friends, Malaysia also want this issue to be addressed seriously. Yes. So I think it's good uh, to raise uh, awareness to the uh, Malaysian public because this is a common, uh, I mean, the, the problem of Malaysia as well. Actually, well, uh, there are cases uh, involving other countries like uh, a few days ago, as a report uh, in the media that, uh, you know, uh, involving uh, migrant workers uh, from other countries. So maybe the different approach mm. <laughs> that uh, what I did and the other ambassador well, did. Well, they, they come to you and you, you talk about um, and maybe enforcement as being one of the areas that mm. needs improvement here in Malaysia. Um, domestic workers, Indonesian domestic workers who have uh, faced exploitation or, or face abuse, they come, they go to the embassy, they go to you yeah. for protection and help. And that's why you have insider knowledge of the extent yeah, and sure. what, how widespread the, these abuses are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we have a shelter in, in, at, our, at the embassy. You now currently we, we have uh, 140 three Indonesian women at the, at the shelter, and those uh, with uh, uh, different cases, uh, abuse, exploitation, unpaid, and so on. So they, I, I know the, the, the real situation. And also I received report from uh, people directly because my mobile my <laughs> is open for everybody. <laughs> I got a report from uh, Indonesian uh, citizen that things happen in this area, this area. So, uh, this, I think, uh, not only my concern, but also the concern of Malaysia as well, because uh, I think Malaysia also need to address this issue for the good name of Malaysia yes. also. So I'm happy, once again, <laughs> I'm happy to uh, uh, let you know that I got a lot of support from Malaysia. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah. so you've been working a long time with um, the Malaysian government, Malaysian authorities, yes. Um, with this MOU that was signed last yes, year yeah. between Malaysia and Indonesia on the recruitment and protection of mm. um, in Indonesian domestic workers. Is it called PDA or PDI? So PDI. Uh, PDI. PDI, Pekerja Domestic, domestic Indonesia. Indonesia. Okay, yeah. so PDI is a sh short yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> way to say this. Um, and you, if I may quote you, you called it by far the most progressive domestic worker rights document we have successfully undertaken with uh -huh. another country. Yes. I'm curious to know what makes this MOU so progressive that you are able to claim that? This is very detailed. Mm. 
mm. very detail. And it's a very thick uh, MOU. And uh, there we spell out uh, the responsibility of each party in the MOU. The, 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 mistake work, the responsibility of the domestic worker, the responsibility of the employer, the responsibility of the government of Indonesia and Malaysia, the responsibility of Malaysian agency and Indonesian agency as well. So all this MO is very progressive in the sense that it's very detailed and everybody has its uh, responsibility that uh, you have to bear in mind. So, so are there MOUs that Indonesia has with other countries? Is it similar to this one? This is the first model this and we are going uh, to use this uh, MOU with Malaysia uh, as a model uh, of our MOU with other countries. And uh, now we are trying to uh, export <laughs> this MOU to okay. Middle East, uh, Middle East country because this is the the most progressive and the most uh, comprehensive MOU that Indonesia ever uh, has uh, okay. in the history. But is the MOU legally binding? Is it, so? So my question: I think labor activists have raised concerns that the MOU might be a toothless tiger; yeah. that there might be no bite to it. Uh, how might the provisions be enforced? The MOU is not legally binding. The MU, uh, MOU is uh, made uh, with a good will. So the MOU is morally binding. Morally binding. Morally binding. So if you s agree to sign an MOU, and then you are morally uh, bind by this MOU. So I think uh, morally binding is uh, even more important than legally binding. <laughs> because <laughs> so uh, I don't think that this uh, MOU is uh, uh, powerless. Okay. Because it's, uh, you, s you show how the, m the moral or the commitment of the commitment of each party to implement the MOU. So uh, two different things maybe, uh, legally binding and morally binding. Moral is more important than legal. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to some people with a strong moral compass maybe, <laughs> yes. Um, Ambassador, the, um, when the MOU was first announced, and I think we were getting bits, and, you know, bits of information about, um, for instance, I think there was um, having one made one task, having a household of um, maximum, I think, six family six members. Family. And then there was a certain threshold of household income before yeah, you yeah. could. So I think all those things that came out, um, as you write, there were a lot of details in the MOU. Uh, there, were, there was some um, pushback from about, for, for the MOU. I think mm. associations, recruitment agency mm. associations said that, well, maybe this is not fair to Malaysian employers. How do you counter those um, those, yeah, those comments. Be, be, because uh, our experience told us that one uh, domestic worker in the household, she did all kind of works. Yeah. You, uh, you look after the pets, you're washing the car, look after the child or look after the elderly. Or the and business cook, sometimes. The business mm -hmm. sometimes. So this is the reason why we have to limit uh, the the, the, the scope of the works of its uh, uh, domestic workers. And Malaysia also agree uh, to this kind of arrangement. So we could, uh, because uh, you know, we have uh, domestic workers, uh, I mean general works, I mean cleaning, cooking is one work, and then uh, look after the uh, uh, infants is another, another uh, uh, works, because you know, if you have to clean and you have to look after your kids, you have to wash the car. So it's also to protect the, 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 the welfare of the kids and also to protect the welfare of the elderly. So this domestic worker can focus only for, to a certain uh, jobs, mm -hmm. not do uh, from A to Z. So I think it's impossible. Uh, for someone to do this, uh, the whole job in the, in the family, and we found also in one family they are not uh, employed in one family, but they are employed also two other family, the the relative, or maybe the, the the children, maybe the parents. So they work in two uh, Household. different houses. So we found this uh, this uh, cases. So that's why we uh, spell out in the MOU that that should be a limitation of the scope of the work not only for the welfare of the workers, but also for the welfare of the family, mm. uh, especially for those who have uh, infants, mm. because we don't want to uh, see that uh, the 
kids uh, now yes. uh, being uh, being uh, abandoned uh, or being neglected. Uh, yeah. yeah, neglected. You, yeah. You, so essentially, you're spelling out the job description in yes. the service contract, yes. which is you know fair employment practices. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about this new SOP on uh -huh. hiring uh, Indonesian domestic workers. Are you satisfied with this new recruitment process? Now, I'm wondering what changes have been made and if you're seeing an improvement? Yeah, uh, here again, with the SOP, uh, we spell out the responsibility of uh, each party. So uh, actually the, 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 the SOP is also good for Malaysia because both countries uh, have control. Mm -hmm. Unlike before the MOU, uh, uh, we, Malaysia, recruit our domestic worker to what's so called uh, SMO system made uh, online, made online, online yeah. system and this is actually very dangerous not only for Indonesia uh, workers but also for Malaysian uh, employer because with this uh, as you call the uh, SMO made online system you know, the employer only uh, directly recruit uh, from uh, someone that uh, very untrained and we don't know the background of these uh, workers. So uh, with this SOP, I think it uh, both protect the interest of the workers as well as the, uh, the interest of the employer because we clearly know they are here, they are, we know the background, we know that they are already trained, they, we know that they are uh, already uh, passed the health screening mm. and so on. So this is for, for uh, the good uh, of the both sides. What are the conversations that you're hearing from, um, from, your, so from Indonesian uh, domestic workers about the changes that have been made? They are very happy. They are very happy. and now they have uh, one day, one day off in a week, so they they can contact and they can uh, you know uh, contact with uh, their friends. They can make a phone call to to the family and so on. Because in many cases, you you uh, Melissa, you maybe it's very uh, uh, you know absurd to say that there are cases that years the workers they don't communicate uh, with oh. the family. Even now, I'm handling cases 19 years without contact with the family. Wow, why? Because the, 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 the employer, the employer does, not does not allow her uh, to communicate. And they don't receive any ringgit in, within 19 years. This kind of thing happen. We have uh, 19 years, we have 17 years, we have 12 years. So there's a reason why uh, uh, I'm uh, Indonesia insists that we have to uh, regulate this uh, business because there have been a lot of abuses to our domestic workers. That's the reason why. Nin 19 years of unpaid salary. Yes, only once 200 ringgit within 19 years. Uh, Ambassador, is there a reason why these um, abuses and exploitations happen? And you said 90% of the complaints are from domestic workers, yes. right? Is there an aspect, the live-in aspect of being in the employer's house full time? Does that contribute to a more insidious, concealed form of abuse? The reason is, is, is uh, uh, classic. Uh, no, we, 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 we pay the salary, but we put in uh, in my account. Yeah, but when she asked, uh, uh, may I ask, uh, I can, uh, may I send uh, my salary to her? No, 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 maybe you will, you know, lose your money, something like that. But, you know, you can imagine, after more than 10 years, you have to pay, let's say, 150,000 ringgit. <laughs> it's a lot of money. Yeah. And some, some, dear, some cases, I found, no, I'm bankrupt, no, I'm poor, I cannot pay. Mm. This happened. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm bankrupt. I cannot pay. But already ten years. So this kind of things happen. That's what. What does your office do when they receive complaints like that? Like these? First, of course, we will co uh, contact the GTK, what we get the labor office, mm -hmm. uh, to help us to uh, settle this problem. Some uh, the, the the employer are, are cooperative. They are cooperative. They want to settle uh, at least uh, eighty percent. Uh, if the data that I have. Uh, more than around 70 uh, percent, the the employer finally they 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 paid, yeah, mm. and uh, the rest around 30 or 25 percent they they didn't or they refused to uh, to pay the salary. Sometimes it's very ridiculous uh, to to hear the the reason why they don't want to. Why I should pay? I give them food, I give them accommodation. Why should I pay? 
This kind of thing happen, Melissa. It may be unbelievable, but this happened. So, how would you describe the level of understanding or awareness about domestic workers' rights on all sides, uh, on the side of the employer, on the side of the employee, and also of the recruitment agency, because they play a, a, a key role? As uh, you know, uh, look at the data. Look at the data. Uh, let's say the data that I have today in in our shelter. There are 140. Three uh, uh, workers, uh, domestic workers, in our embassy now, and only nine of them have uh, work permit. Oh. So most of them, all the cases, all cases, most of them are undocumented, and this is the the the, the problem, uh, the root of the problem because they are undocumented. I'm very happy that the Malaysian government now introduces uh, so-called recalibration. Mm. Recalibration. Now you know uh, already uh, 286,000 Indonesian registered to the uh, recalibration to legalize their status. So, and uh, you know how many are undocumented? Only 1,038. Uh, how many of them are, are domestic, domestic workers? Oh, yes. Only 1,028. So the willingness of the employer to regulate or to legalize their uh, domestic workers very low. So I see there is an intention, my, my feeling, there is an intention that employer prefer to hire undocumented. Okay. My feeling. Because most cases that I handled, they are undocumented. So, so what do you think is pushing them to the the domestic worker black market? Is it the, the high fees? Is it the process? What, what, is, what do you think are the reasons? And the, by identifying the reasons, maybe can, you can stop the, the problem from happening. Some, some said uh, the fee is, is very, but we look compare also with uh, other sectors. Uh, you read on, on the news that, uh, uh, let's say, workers from Bangladesh or for, from Nepal, Nepal, also they pay a very high mm -hmm. You know, even during the COVID, mm -hmm. uh, the the market of hiring domestic worker uh, over twenty thousand ringgit, and people are willing to hire over twenty thousand. And when when we put the ceiling of fifteen thousand, that's the ceiling, that's the maximum, the, max, right? the it's maximum, a range. Uh, mm -hmm. the maximum. It's already lower than the market at the at the time when we negotiate the the MOU. So of course uh, uh, we can uh, uh, evaluate the implementation of the MOU. Maybe we can reduce. For me, the lower the cost, the better. Okay. Yeah. But the problem is the willingness of the uh, agent uh, to pay or to accept the price that we uh, put on sale. Mm -hmm. I think that's another issue. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I think it's a market uh, market mechanism. And uh, for me, for me, if if the price is too high to hire Indonesian domestic worker, you can hire from other countries. We don't have any issues. We okay. don't have problem. So, there so but don't hire. Oh, the price is too, the price is too high. So okay, but I want to hire uh, Indonesian domestic workers, but they don't pay the salary. <laughs> this is another problem. I so. I don't know what happened with the domestic worker from other countries because I don't have the data and uh, I, I never uh, uh, read a news report saying that domestic worker from other countries uh, face the same problem. Or this is only the problem of domestic worker from Indonesia. Indonesia. Hmm. I don't know. But my feeling, most of cases involving domestic workers are Indonesian. Why do you think that is? At least uh, I never read any any uh, news on uh, abuse or exploitations against domestic worker from the uh, let's say the Philippines, Philippines or from uh, Myanmar or from any other countries. Unless you you can uh, show, <laughs> show I, I, I don't have any any yeah. proof but for you at right least, now. At least I talked to um, ambassador uh, from other uh, ascending countries. Mm. They don't have uh, such issues. Do they do have uh, issues, but not as massive as ours. Understood. Is there are there areas you would like to see improve in the recruitment process, in the implementation of the MOU, 
I know, you know, it's, it's, it's a living document. It's, it's a work in progress, yes. right? So um, uh, which areas would you like to see more effort, more attention, more improvement in? I think, as I said uh, before, the, the uh, enforcement of those uh, abusive employer is uh, very important. Okay. To give a kind of uh, a deterrence to those to not to uh, uh, exploit or not to abuse uh, domestic workers. I think uh, now uh, I don't know why, as if employers are not afraid uh, of uh, exploiting uh, our domestic worker. Because there's no punishment for it. Um, it could be like that, or at least the employer feel feels that it's, it's safe not to, you know, uh, to uh, exploit because uh, the number of uh, cases uh, continue uh, to increase. I, I didn't see any uh, reduction of uh, cases. For example, uh, in let's say compare the data in 2022, uh, 143. Uh, unpaid cases in 2022 and in 2023 up to November 13 uh, 133 so it's, uh, it's remain 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 the same mm. so uh, this the, the data shows that uh, there's Nothing no reduction uh, in the, the the number of uh, cases involving our uh, domestic workers I'm happy that the uh, uh, DG of uh, immigration uh, raised this issue. Oh, please inform. I will. I will uh, uh, take uh, an enforcement. But the problem is here, Melissa. Most cases, uh, let's say un unpaid. Of course, they are they are uh, undocumented. But if we bring directly the case to the immigration, mm -hmm. what happened with the salary? Can the immigration settle the salary of these uh, workers? We go to the we go to uh, JTK or the labor office because there are labor issues, not only immigration. So when we have when we see this is labor issues and then we brought uh, the case to the, the labor office, of course within there is is another issue immigration issues and uh, the, our domestic work when we ask them to make a report. And they said, uh, Aduba, Ambassador, if I report to the immigration, what happened with my salary? Right. I might be deported. So what happened with my salary? This kind of uh, problem, you know, when we are going to bring the case directly to the immigration office, unless it's a guarantee that uh, there's a kind of victim protection. Mm. Yeah, because from our perspective, they are victim. Victim of exploitation, victim of cheating, victim of abuse, while on the other side, the workers feel I might be uh, you know, punished, uh, right? punished mm. because uh, I'm uh, undocumented. So this kind of uh, things always happen. Yeah. Mm. So uh, that's the problem. <laughs> really. yeah. Ambassador, thank you for highlighting no, this no, issue my on pleasure, the show. Uh, Appreciate Malaysia. your candor on this. Thank you. Yeah, I think this is good for uh, Malaysia and good also for Indonesia because we are uh, Negeri Serumpun. Negeri so, Serumpun, that's right. <laughs> that's all we have for you on this episode of Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris signing off for the evening. Thank you so much for watching and good night. Thank you.